Ukraine and Russia may freeze the war according to the Korean scenario. Joe Biden's administration is increasingly concerned that Vladimir Putin is gaining enough power to change the trajectory of the war and perhaps turn back the once bleak outlook. Both sides can finally move to a negotiated ceasefire and freeze the war according to the Korean scenario, writes the New York Times, citing Western officials interviewed on condition of anonymity. There is a growing understanding within the Biden administration that the next few months could prove decisive as at some point both sides may finally move to a negotiated ceasefire, a truce similar to the one that ended active hostilities in Korea in 1953 or simply to a frozen conflict. The authors write, it is noted that Russian troops have launched a new offensive near the country's second largest city, Kharkiv, forcing Ukraine to divert its already exhausted troops to defend the territory. And the months-long debate in Washington over whether to provide Ukraine with an arms and ammunition package created a gap that Russia clearly took advantage of. According to journalists, American officials express confidence that many of these Russian gains can be reversed once the flow of new weapons is fully opened, most likely sometime in July. But they are hesitant to predict where the fighting will take place in a few months or even years. U.S. officials say President Joe Biden continues to reject a suggestion from French President Emmanuel Macron that a Western troop deployment to Ukraine may be necessary. Privately, some of President Biden's aides fear that just as the United States learned key lessons from the war about technologies that work and those that don't, so too has Putin. And what worries them most is that as Russia replaces weapons destroyed in the first 27 months of the war, Putin could regain his position just as Biden prepares to meet his closest allies at the Group of Seven meeting in Italy next month. It is unclear whether Biden will be able to repeat the claim, which he made in Finland last summer, that Putin has already lost this war. The publication writes, Some veterans of Putin's serial confrontations are not surprised by this turn of events. Stephen Hadley, national security advisor to President George W. Bush, noted that Russia often starts its wars bad and ends strong. Numerous factors are helping the Russian military advance. Due to the delay in American funding, Russia was able to achieve enormous artillery superiority over Ukraine. The lack of air defense ammunition has also allowed the Russian Federation to use its air power with greater impunity. An economist leads army. New York Times revealed what tasks were set for Russian defense minister. For Vladimir Putin, the appointment of a new defense minister is new building material for waging a long war. Economist Andrei Belosov, appearing in public for the first time as head of the Ministry of Defense, spoke about bureaucracy, not about the battlefield, writes the New York Times. Journalists say it signals a recognition that the military production that fuels Russia's war and fuels the Russian economy must be carefully managed to withstand a war of attrition. At the same time, Russia is playing a long game on the battlefield. Belusov noted the bureaucratic details of the fast-growing military effort and made no reference to the situation at the front. He said his priority was improving the standards of care and living standards for soldiers, veterans and their families. The excessive paperwork that soldiers face when receiving benefits, he said, should be resolved within the framework of interdepartmental electronic coordination. The authors point out that such statements were a striking example of how the sudden rise of a taciturn economic policy expert at the head of a vast military apparatus became a new component of Putin's strategy to defeat Ukraine and the West in a war of attrition. The article indicates that Putin is focused on subordinating the country's economy to his military needs, counting on the fact that a war in Ukraine or at least a militarized confrontation with the West could determine Russia's future for years to come. Putin's priority is war, and the war of attrition is won by the economy, said Alexander Prokopenko, a former Russian central banker who now works at the Carnegie Eurasia Center in Berlin. During his more than six years as Putin's economic advisor, Belosov gained a reputation as a staunch supporter of the dominant role of the state in the economy and high government spending. The appointment of a methodical bureaucrat to oversee Russia's war effort also coincides with the consolidation of Russia's slower strategy on the battlefield. Failed attempts to overwhelm the enemy in the first month of the 2022 invasion with armored strikes and landings have given way to a systematic breakdown of Ukrainian defenses along much of the front. This strategy allowed the Russian Federation to use its superiority in manpower and firepower to gradually advance against Ukraine's overstretched and exhausted defenders.